A car initially traveling at 29 meters per second undergoes a constant negative acceleration of magnitude 1.75 meters per second squared after its brakes are applied. How many revolutions does each tire make before the car comes to stop, assuming the car does not skid and the tires have a radi radii of 0.33 meters? B, what is the angular speed of the wheels when the car has traveled half the total distance? So we're trying to solve for two things here, but let's just first understand what's going on. So we have this car, right? And so it's going to have these wheels, and we know it's traveling at 29 meters per second. And then the person's going to slam on their brakes, and they're going to start decelerating at 1.75 meters per second squared, right? So the acceleration is negative because it's slowing down, right? And then it's going to slow all the way down to stop. And what we're trying to do in A is find how many revolutions each tire makes before the car comes to a stop, right? So what we're trying to do is go ahead and solve for theta, right? Because theta basically tells us uh, the angle at which it turns. And if we have the angle, we can find how many revolutions it turns. So how do we want to do this? So basically, the first thing for every problem is just write down the given. So we're given the initial velocity, 29 meters per second squared. We're given the acceleration, right? They're slowing down at 1.75, so it's negative. We're given the radius, 0.33 meters. And we're also given the final velocity because it's going to stop. It's at 0 meters per second. So how do we find this? So basically, the way I approach this is we're no, I know we're solving for a revolution, so we're solving for theta. And if I want to find theta through the kinematic equations, or rotational kinematic equations, we need the rotational kinematic variables, meaning we're going to need omega, right, the angular velocity, and we need alpha. So how do we find both of these? So let's just start with alpha. So you need to know alpha, or sorry, acceleration is equal to r alpha. And if we want to solve for alpha, we can just divide both sides by r, meaning alpha, right, if I just rewrite this, alpha is equal to the acceleration over uh, the radius. And that's going to give us the alpha we need in order to solve for the equation, right? We need the angular acceleration. So the acceleration is minus 1.75 divided by 0.33. So plug this in, right? So put in your calculator, minus 1.75 divided by 0.33. So you'll get minus 5.3. And then it's going to be in radians per second squared, right? Because that's what we measure it in or alpha, right, angular acceleration. Now we want omega, so you need to know velocity is equal to our omega, meaning if we divide the velocity by the radius, it gives us uh, the angular velocity. So omega is equal to V over R. So it's velocity, we know it is initially, right, 29 meters per second, uh, right, divided by the radius, 0.33. So 29 divided by 0.33 is 87 87.8787. I'm just going to round to 879. And then this is going to be in radians per second. So keep in mind, we could also do uh, omega final, but we don't need to because it's zero. So zero meters per second is obviously just zero radians per second. It's not moving. So yeah, this is basically all we need. So now let's go ahead and solve for how many revolutions does the tire make before it comes to a stop, right? So we need to solve for theta. So theta is question mark alpha we know is minus 5.3 radians per second squared we know omega initial right yeah this is omega initial right because it's we did it based off the initial velocity so omega initial is 87.879 radians per second and then the final omega omega final is just zero radians per second and notice we have three variables so we can solve for theta so you want to think about these just like kinematic equations so the equation that sticks in my head for at least normal kinematics is v squared equals v sub zero squared plus 2a times delta x, right? But for rotational kinematics, it's just going to be omega, uh, omega squared or the angular velocity squared times the initial uh, angular velocity squared plus 2 times alpha times theta, right? Theta is the position, alpha is the angular or the acceleration, and then this is the velocity, right? So we're going to be using this equation right here to solve. So let me just erase this and we'll rewrite it. So we're going to be solving for theta, right? So we have omega squared is equal to omega zero squared plus two times alpha times it's theta or delta theta, right? Because it's, it's basically the same thing. Just You just need to know that's what it is. So let's just start plugging in and solve. So omega, right, is going to be zero, right? So zero squared is zero equals omega zero squared, which is 87.879 squared plus 2 times alpha, which is minus 5.3, times the change in theta. So if we want to solve, we just basically minus this to the other side, and then we're going to divide by this. So I'm not actually going to go through the algebra, but I just explained it, right? So this is going to become negative because we moved it to the other side. So 87.879 squared 
and then we're dividing by 2 times minus 5.3, right? This right here. So go ahead and plug this in. So do minus 87.879 squared and divide that by uh, 2 times minus 5.3. And when you go ahead and do that, you're going to get 700 and are you going to get delta theta, right? The change in theta is 728.558 uh, radians. So this is in radians, right? But we want it in revolutions. We need, instead of radians, we want how many revolutions the tires turn. So in, we got to convert it, right? So basically there's two pi radians for every one revolution, right? So meaning we can just do it like this, the radians cancel. So you just want to divide your number by two pi essentially. So dividing it by two pi, when you do that, you're going to get 100. Uh, so I'm going to write it over here. Theta is going to be equal to 115.95, and then it's going to be revolutions. So you can round. I'm just going to say 116. So it's going to be equal to about 116 revolutions. So 116 revolutions, that's going to be the change in theta, or essentially how many times the tire turns before it comes to a stop. So 116 revolutions is your answer to A. Now let's move on to B. So for B, what we're trying to find is the angular speed of the wheels when the car has traveled half the total distance. So instead of it, right, so instead of going the full distance, we want to go half the distance it goes, right? So imagine that's the full distance. We want to find half the distance, right? At that point, we want to find its speed. So we're trying to find, or its angular speed, sorry. So we're trying to find theta, or omega, sorry. So we want to find omega, right, at this point. So how do we determine what that point is in our equation? So we're going to just do it at half the distance, right? So if the total distance it turns, right, is 728.558 radians, we can just half it, right, when we plug it into this equation, because we're going to plug in theta, and we're going to solve for omega. So if we plug this in for theta, we can solve for it, but just divide it by 2 because we want halfway. We don't want the full thing, right, because if it was the full thing, it would just be 0 because we know it is, right? So let me just write out the equation. So omega squared is equal to omega 0 squared plus 2 alpha delta theta. So we want to solve for this right here. So I'm just going to do omega, and I'll square root this whole side. right? I'm just square rooting it to get rid of this. So we just have omega. Omega 0 is still going to be the same, right? It's still starting at this. We're just going. We're trying to find it at the halfway point. So 87.879 squared plus 2 times, and we're still decelerating, right? So the alpha is minus 5.3 times delta theta. So this is where it actually determines our position. So it's halfway the whole full thing. So the full thing is 728.558 radians. We're just halving it. So uh, I'm just going to write it as 728.558. Sorry if you can't really read this. Uh, but yeah, just make sure, make sure you know what I'm doing. So 728.558 radians, but divided by 2 because we're going halfway. So yeah, you just want to plug this in. So second square root, 87.879 squared plus 2 times the alpha angular acceleration minus 5.3 and then multiply that by 728.558 divided by 2 and if you go ahead and do this you should get that it's going to be equal to one second so you'll get that it's equal to about uh, 62 Point one four, so about this, 62.14 uh, radians per second, right? Because we're using radians, so it's going to be radians per second. That's what we measure omega in. So the angular speed of the wheels, 62.14 radians per second. That's going to be the speed halfway, right? So this is going to be your answer to B. And yeah, so this is going to be your answer and for B, and this is A. And so yeah, hopefully you found this useful.